How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be replacing a carburetor on an old school Briggs & Stratton eight horsepower engine. So let's get right into it. So I'm working on a little home light riding lawnmower here. It has the engine in the back. This is a 10 horsepower engine. It is a Briggs & Stratton and the model number is a 256707-0109-01. My customer came in and said that he wanted the carburetor rebuilt because it wasn't running properly. And I'm gonna show you guys why I'm going to be replacing this carburetor instead of rebuilding the old one. So I have the old carburetor here. We're gonna to go to the bowl. You guys are gonna notice that uh, there's quite a bit of rust inside of this bowl. And the bottom of the bowl is very pitted. You guys can see just how much rust has built up inside of there. So as you could imagine, the inside of the carburetor, specifically the main jet, was not in the best condition. So moving on to our carburetor here, you guys can see that oxidization has started and it's pitting the aluminum. My seat was completely clogged, so it wasn't really letting fuel through where the fuel inlet here. Now on this model, it just has a little fuel valve that threads into the side of the carburetor here, and then you can open and close that. So there's all types of uh, calcium buildup and oxidization starting there as well. And moving back to the carburetor here, coming down to where the main jet is, I'm gonna to try to get you guys a shot. That's actually the main jet inside of there, guys. So when I took off the bowl of this carburetor, I tried to remove the main jet, but I noticed that someone had already stripped the slot that was in the main jet. So I decided that I was gonna run it in my ultrasonic cleaner for a bit, put some three-in-one or penetrating oil inside there to try to get the main jet unseized because I wanted to remove the main jet so that I could get at the distribution tube down below. Very difficult and as you guys can see what's left of the main jet it's just completely destroyed. So what I tried to do was use an easy out on my drill. So I just have a little set. You guys can see it says screw extractor set and you just put these into your drill and you put your drill in reverse and it's going to grab onto the inside of a bolt. Normally what you do is you drill into it and then you get one of these, you put it inside of that hole that you drilled and then it's gonna grab that. So again, to rebuild this, my customer would have had about $40 in a rebuild kit. He would have had about $8, I think, for the bowl, then some miscellaneous things. So we're upwards of $50 Canadian now. And then on top of that, I would have had to spend more time to clean this. I probably would have soda blasted it. And if you guys wanna see a video on how I soda blast carburetors and make them look new again, you guys can check that video out. I will link it in the top right of your screen. But I probably would have soda blasted this carb, ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner a few times, and then, like I said, went and replaced all the parts, and that could have taken me an hour, maybe an hour and a half to do all of that. So what I did was I went ahead and I purchased a brand new aftermarket carburetor. Now, if we pull up an IPL, which is an illustrated parts list for this machine right here, you're gonna see a breakdown of the carburetor and all the components that you would need for this carburetor. Now, the part number for this carburetor is a 491604. And that carburetor is discontinued. And I remembered seeing one of these carburetors. I just couldn't remember where. So I figured I would start my search on amazon.ca because I'm here in Canada. So what I did was I typed in Briggs & Stratton carburetor. And sure enough, after about three pages of searching, I was able to find this carburetor right here. Now the number for this carburetor right here is a 491 590. So instead of a 491604, it's a 491590. So I don't have to spend $40 on a carb kit. I don't have to replace the bowl. I don't have to replace the float. Basically, I can just go ahead, take this, bolt it right up, and it should work. Now I might have to do a little bit of adjustments, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the bolt that holds the float bowl into place. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bowl and then we're gonna check inside of here, make sure that the float is set to the proper level. So with our bowl removed, we can have a look now at our float and you guys can see they run a plastic float instead of the old brass ones that are brazed together. And uh, these are much nicer. They're a lot lighter and less prone to leaking because they don't have that brazed seam in between them. Now I'm gonna be pressure testing this carburetor, but that means we're gonna to have to install our little fuel shutoff inlet first. And then I can go ahead and pressure test this, but the float looks like it's set to exactly level. You want that nice and flat and 
parallel with your carburetor right there. So everything's looking good. The bowl gasket also looks like it's mounted in the proper position. And we can see here that the main jet has a slot in it and it is not stripped like the old one was. So I'm gonna go ahead and install our little inlet here. Now this fuel valve here was a little bit seized up, but I'm sure that if I cleaned it up, I would still be able to get a little bit of use out of it. But because we're gonna go with a brand new carburetor, I'm also going to be going with a brand new fuel shutoff valve. And you'll notice that this is a 90 degree and it also has threads on one end of it. So removing that little cap, I'll be able to go in there, thread that in and run this fuel shutoff valve, which is plastic, it's newer, and it won't give you as much grief as one of the older designs there. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that as well with a little bit of Teflon tape onto it. Now you don't need much Teflon tape, you just wanna give it a little bit of extra grab so that you're preventing the fuel from seeping down those threads. And what you have to remember is that when you're applying any sort of tape to threads, you want to apply it in the same direction that you're going to be threading your piece in so that it doesn't unthread itself. So we're going to be threading this fuel valve in a clockwise direction to tighten it up, which means that when I applied the Teflon tape, I went in a clockwise direction so that the tail end is hanging that way. That way it won't unravel itself when you go to thread this in. So on this engine, our fuel tank is mounted over here and our fuel line comes around and comes in from the front of the engine. So I've bolted up so that the inlet there is aiming towards the front. And now we can go ahead and pressure test this carburetor. So with my fuel valve in the off position, the first thing I'm gonna do is just test my fuel valve. So I'm gonna come down here to my little pressure pump and we're gonna put approximately five PSI in there. And I'm just gonna let that sit for a couple seconds. And all this is doing is it's applying pressure to that fuel shutoff valve there. And we're just gonna see to make sure that it doesn't lose pressure. If it does, then that means that I'm leaking from the fuel valve itself. So that should be good. And we can see that we're not leaking. So now what I can do is go ahead and open this fuel valve now. And we're gonna come in here and double check our gauge. And we can see that we're still at five PSI, which means that now our needle valve is sealed. And if I lift up this float, you're gonna see that the gauge drops, which means that not only will fuel go into this carburetor, but it will seal when the fuel goes and pushes against that float. So this carburetor should not leak. That also tells us that our Teflon tape on our threads here on our fuel shutoff valve is sealing up and that's good as well. Now these are the things you wanna do when you get an aftermarket carburetor because a lot of times you're gonna find that sometimes the needle valve will be stuck or the float will be set too high so that when you have the bowl installed, it pushes down on the needle valve all the time. And I am going to be doing a full video breakdown on OEM versus aftermarket carburetors. They won't be these two carburetors necessarily, but I've been filming this video series for about a year now. So every time I get a different aftermarket carburetor and I use that to replace an OEM one, I do a little comparison side by side to show you the slight differences between the two, the quality of manufacturing differences and all sorts of little cool, interesting things. So we're gonna go ahead and reassemble this carburetor and going back to those slight differences on our OEM carburetor, the little bowl bolt here was I believe a 7 16 and on this carburetor here the aftermarket one it is a 13 mil so it's pretty clear where this one was manufactured compared to that one there you have North America versus China and before we install our new carburetor onto our engine I have to swap over our little air box mounting post, I guess you could call it. And there's a couple different ways you can remove that. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and do what's known as the double nut method. So you take two nuts, tighten them up together, and then you go ahead and use that to unthread your bolt. I'm not too worried about scratching that up. So I just went ahead and used a pair of vice grips here to loosen it off. And it's loose enough now to the point where I can just simply unthread this by hand and we're gonna swap it over. And here's a perfect opportunity to explain one of those manufacturing differences that I was talking about. So I went ahead and applied a little bit of Permatex nickel anti-seize to my bolt and I went to thread it in and you're gonna notice that it won't thread in from, I'm threading it in from the bottom just to show you guys, but this thread here is actually larger than the hole and the thread that's inside of here. So what I'm gonna do is take my thread finder and I'm gonna match up a thread to this and then I'm gonna go ahead and drill this slightly bigger and tap a new hole. It's a very simple fix and it won't take me all that long, but again, this is what you're gonna to have to go through when you're swapping from OEM to aftermarket. There's always gonna be these slight little differences where you have a smaller metric thread instead of a larger imperial thread. Like I said, very simple fix, but still time consuming. So using my thread finder here, I can see that this bolt here is 28 threads per inch. So now all I have to do is find a corresponding tap. So I have here a quarter inch by 28 threads per inch, national fine thread. 
and I'm gonna be using this to enlarge this hole here. And just to double check, I'm making sure that it is going into the old hole, which it is. So going over to our tap drill chart, we can see that if we are using a quarter by 28 national fine, we're gonna be using a tap drill size of 730 seconds. So I've gone ahead and drilled out my hole, but just to make sure that we don't get any of the shavings inside of the carburetor. I'm just gonna go ahead and tap it this way so that it stays away from the bowl. And I can go ahead and use my compressor just to blow out some of those extra shavings in there. And if you put a little bit of three in one oil on your tap like I did, it will help catch all of the little aluminum shavings in there. And when you're tapping, just remember to go about one and a half turns in and then back the tap off about a half turn to clear those threads. And with just a little bit of modification, we now have our air filter post installed. So I'm ready to take this carburetor here and reinstall it onto our engine. So that's it for part one of a two part video series. I tried to break it up a little bit because I didn't want it to run on too long. Stay tuned for the second part of this video where we're gonna have to do some other slight modifications to the air box to get this carburetor to work properly. And then we'll go ahead and get it mounted up and get this machine running. If you guys enjoyed this video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.